guys. I got the shirt. I got the shirt. We are ready for craft work for the win. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, it's finally time for Craftworks Autobahn. All right, then. This is where we really start to get going. Basically, this is where Ralph Hutcher would like you to believe the Craftwork story really began. <laughs> Personally, I think Ralph and Florian is probably the best chronological starting point, but I digress. You can watch my review of that if you haven't seen that. But this is their commercial breakthrough, their most iconic album with their most iconic track. This is basically the big one with Kraftwerk. Having now gone their three test run albums and settled on a sort of sound on image on their third, they went into their fourth album aiming higher. They hadn't yet gone all in on the whole electronic thing yet, you can still hear lots of acoustic elements like guitars and flutes and other stuff, but they were really starting to figure out, oh we should really start to center our band around synthesizers. And this is the result. Now, as for my personal experience, this is also the point at which my own personal experience with Kraftwerk starts to go way back. Like, those first three albums, I think I first heard at the end of high school or beginning of college, somewhere around there. But, for the most part, Kraftwerk were my shit in middle school. Now, this only applies to, like, certain albums, and some didn't enter into my ears until the beginning of high school, but Autobahn is not one of them. I first heard Autobahn as a recommendation from one of my dad's friends. He burned me a copy of his Autobahn CD and gave it to me one time when we were at, like, one of our little get-together parties that my dad has with a whole bunch of his college friends every few months. Now, at this point, I already was a Kraftwerk fan. My dad told me I should, uh, check them out after seeing my enthusiasm for Orbital as a little kid, and I heard a whole bunch of tracks from near the end of the career, like The Mix, period, all those. So by this point, I was already a Kraftwerk fan and had heard a shorter version of Autobahn, but I was still really little, like 6th or 7th grade, somewhere around there. It's like, still pre-long hair at this point, if you would believe that. I put it on my, like, my little portable CD player that is now long, broken, and rotting somewhere. So, like, it was just the middle of the night, I put this on, and my mind was blown. <laughs> I knew I was going to sit through a 22-minute version of what was then my favorite Kraftwerk song, but I was not prepared. It's just such a huge track. And, jeez, where to even begin with the title track, Autobahn? Like, you got that kind of, like, that main hook that comes back over and over. You know the one. Actually, I'm told they're not saying fun, 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 but rather foreign, 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 as in we're driving on the Autobahn. We're driving, driving, driving on the Autobahn. They weren't trying to reference the Beach Boys, but... They said, oh, that, well, that fun, fun, fun works, too. <laughs> well, you know, it just rolls off the tongue more easily. They, they don't exactly say a two-syllable word there. Anyway, like, you got that main hook, which is insanely catchy. Do, 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 do. But that basically represents, like, 20% of the song or something. After each appearance of the hook, there's, like, some kind of sidetrack where they have, like, some kind of melody and repeat it for a few minutes and kind of, like, have a jam session with it. And there are three of those sidetracks. There's also an intro with the car starting up and driving off and these vocoder voices saying the title first and more melodic voices with particular emphasis on the end. Autobahn. Also, they do it again in a significantly creepier vocoder voice right after that. Autobahn. So anyway, <laughs> there's these other sidetrack sections. You got that first one, which is a lot prettier, uh, with its main melody being played by the guitar and the flute together. I, I guess this section is supposed to be like driving through the beautiful mountain landscapes of Germany or something like that. And the second main section, uh, meanwhile is a lot more fast-paced, 
got more of those creepy Oh, coders. A lot of whooshing synths imitating cars flying past you at high speed. As a side note, according to my dad, uh, this section of the track is probably the one part that actually best matches his experience of the Autobahn. Like, he obviously grew up here, but he did live in Germany, um, like, for a couple of years in the 70s. Uh, and his family would go on the Autobahn sometimes. <laughs> And there's no speed limit there. Like, according to him, you'd have people going like 80 miles an hour in one lane and like a hundred something miles an hour in the other one. Like, we're used to the American highways where we go where there's like a 55 mile per hour speed limit and people rarely go faster than like 70 unless they're in a big hurry and there's not much traffic and they want to be jerks. So he tells me that like going on the German Autobahn was less like the fun, fun, fun of the Autobahn and more like, hang on, we're all gonna die. But I digress. Of course, this section of the track is not dark and unmelodic for more than like a minute or two <laughs> before some melody comes back in. Uh, so I don't know. Really cool section of the track regardless. Um, and, and surprisingly catchy given that it, given its lack of melody. <laughs> now leaves the final section of this track, which is kind of a combination of the first two sections. Bright and melodic, but also quite fast paced. Seems the lyrics right before it talk about turning on the radio and hearing their own song. And it just kind of carries that sound out for the last uh, five minutes of the track and then coming to a satisfying final note at the end. Okay, so maybe if this track doesn't necessarily fit the story my dad tells me about being an American kid going on the German Autobahn, it does make for a good soundtrack for some long road trip on the highway over here as well. It's 22 minutes very well utilized. Even if it did feel like they were way overdoing it as a little kid and I got bored of it after a while, I'm sure being used to a nine minute cut didn't exactly help, but that's still, that's, that's no longer the case nowadays. Since I've heard the 22 minute version a lot more now, and it doesn't feel quite as long and sprawling as it used to. So yeah, this one track obviously deserves the reputation it's gotten. I have a feeling the rating for this album would be a lot higher if it were the only track, but there are more, four more tracks to talk about here. Perhaps unsurprisingly, none of them live up to the promise of the title track. But that's not to say the others have nothing to recommend them. The other big highlight from this album is a two-parter track called Cometen Melody. Uh, or Comet Melody, as I believe it translates to, based off of a single of theirs which came out the year before. First part of this track is super spacey, creepy, as well as subtle and stripped back, with an interesting uh, whistling melody. I don't know why, but even as a kid I was like, yep, this song's about a comet, all right. Something about that whistling just made me think Comet, even though Comets don't whistle. <laughs> but then I remembered like that little kid of me just sitting in bed with the Comet and Melody one ending late at night, and I was falling asleep, and then suddenly <laughs> completely jump scared by the beginning of part two. But then they directly made up for that jump scare with another ridiculously addicting melody that completely blew my mind as a kid. <laughs> Actually, this is the exact same melody as the first part, but just sped up. The first part, to me, felt like looking at a comet through a telescope, but part two was like you were being shot way out into space. Freaking loved it, and still freaking love it now. But, unfortunately, my enthusiasm for the album starts to wane on the final two tracks, Mitternacht and Morgan Spaziergang, which uh, translate to Midnight and Morning Scroll. These tracks aren't bad per se, but after one legendary track and two fantastic tracks, there's two tracks that are good at best and mediocre at worst. Between the two, I personally prefer Mitternacht. It's got this creepy atmosphere with a sort of organ-like intro, 
and the sort of dripping sound, like, the, I guess that's sort of supposed to be setting the beat, I guess. And these repeating synth lines. <laughs> then after each fifth note, there'd be like all these cool synth effects flying around. <laughs> I thought it was really cool sounding, even if it didn't hit the same ridiculous eye as Comet and Melody 2. I've never been a huge fan of Morgan Spazier Gong, though. Uh, kind of a weak ending, in my opinion. And the main reason for that is that they reuse the melody from the first big section of the title track, and on top of that, play it on a recorder. Or maybe a synth that kind of sounds like a recorder. I do not like the sound of the recorder. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I do like the sounds at the beginning of this track, synths that imitate bird chirping and river flowing and some quite pleasant synth harps. It works as an ending to the album and as a companion to Mitternacht. I suppose it brings the album full circle and leaves you off on a warm fuzzy note, but eh, really not one of their better tracks. So yeah, Autobahn, the album, is not perfect. For one thing, technology has moved on, and you can tell this is still kind of an early prototype of electronic music that came out in the 70s, even if it is still a highly enjoyable one. Though this, this, this criticism applies to a lot of Kraftwerk albums. And personal enjoyment-wise, I have nitpicks too. The long extended jams of the title track took me a few years to get used to, and on top of that, this just isn't the kind of album I can listen to repeatedly. Like, I listened to it, like, five times before the review, and definitely seeing signs of getting sick of it. It's, it's not the greatest album of all time or anything, but it is a great album to be sure. It's a must-listen for all electronic music fans, for historical purposes, if for absolutely nothing else, and even with the context for, of being from 1974 and still kinda sorta sounding like it. Croftwork have always been ridiculously great with melodies, and this album is a prime example of such. I may have said several tracks on Ralph and Florian are catchy, but I'm never going to forget a single melody line on this album as long as I live. All in all, there's a lot of fun, fun, fun to be had on the Autobahn. And go check it out if you haven't already. I'm overall feeling an 8.3 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.